Okay, so I've shown you how to upload data with Excel. Um, next, we want to go ahead and actually use the APIs. Um, so the first thing we can do right now is go ahead and click on Build Info, and you get this um, user secret and client ID. Um, so you'll need those two. And the last part of the API keys is if you click on RESTful APIs. So let me go ahead and I'll copy this user secret, and I'll actually go ahead and um, go into... So I'm going to go into Supply Chain Insights, and in config.json, I'll go ahead and paste in my user secret. Um, and then I'll do my client ID. And the last thing we need is our client secret, so we'll grab that now. So to get our client secret, we'll go into RESTful APIs, um, and then we'll go into My APIs, and then we'll click on Manager Keys, and then we'll click Show. And this is the client secret we need, so we'll get ahead and copy that. Um, and then we'll paste it here. We'll save it. So that's how you kind of get your API credentials. Now, um, the first thing we want to do, um, we can show you two ways to do this. So we can do something like um, get all customers. I found the following customers from Demo Carrier. Um, so here's all the customers we have, and I, these are the dummy uh, customers that I put in. Um, but here's kind of the customers that you'll get. So you know, this is Ask Me Watson, but let's show you how to do this with APIs. So using APIs, um, we can do the exact same thing. Um, so we can go into Supply Chain Insights, and in here we'll say Get Customers. Um, and I'm going to go into that repo, so we'll go into uh, Supply Chain Insights, and here we can do something like npm install. That'll install all of our dependencies. Um, great, so now with our Get Customers, we're just using this, um, um, this API to actually get all the customers, and the actual API documentation you can find here. Click on Documentation, and for Customers, I'm using this find customers API, um, so it's this get and it's that uh, API, and you can see that the these things are required. This should be required as well. Um, so we're just getting that, and we, you see we're using our config file here, and we just output this into the get all customers. Let's try that. Uh, we can do node uh, get customers, and we can go ahead and format the document. And we'll see all these things. Um, so that's great. Um, so that's just an easy way to make an API call. It's the same thing as I showed you before um, with Watson. Um, next, we're going to actually add a product. So we'll go ahead and go into the sample product. Um, and we'll do another ID. We'll do, uh, we'll do uh, YouTube uh, 111. Um, again, this is similar to the Excel sheet, but we're actually going to use APIs to do this. So again, product description, um, this is a demo to show you how to use APIs. Um, so we've saved this sample product file, and actually what we'll do is we'll use loadproduct.js. So loadproduct.js is going to use this uh, sample product, it's going to parse it, it's going to use our config to actually um, take the credentials, like our API keys, and it's first going to um, it's first going to add the product, and then once it adds the product, it's going to look that product up and get that info behind it. And we're also, we can also use Ask Watson to, um, to actually see that it's actually been in there. So <clears throat> just to show you that I'm, I'm not making this up, I'll go ahead and ask Watson for this YouTube 111 thing, and it should not be in the, um, in the platform yet. So I'll say, um, um, show me product YouTube one on one. There should be nothing. I did not find any product related to YOUTUB one hundred eleven from Demo Carrier. Um, but now, if we run this load product script, you'll see it makes a post request um, to products, and we're putting that product info, which is just this sample product.json file. And after that, we're, we're, we're just calling a, a get product by ID, and that ID is just um, 
is whatever we used um, in the ID for this sample product JSON. So this will be the YouTube 101. Um, so let's go ahead and run it. So we'll do uh, node load product. Um, you can, so this is the, the product that has just been queried for. Um, so you can see it's called YouTube 101, and this is a demo to show how to use the APIs. So now let's go ahead and do the same thing and ask Watson for it. This time Watson should be able to find it. I found the following product related to YOUTUB 111 from... Um, yeah, so that's more or less it. Awesome. Um, so that's exactly how you would uh, upload data using APIs. And of course, you can upload um, data automatically using cloud functions or other um, the continuous integration or continuous delivery tools. But this is just kind of a simple way, um, an intro of how to do that. Okay, so I've shown you how to use APIs to integrate with Supply Chain Insights. The last thing I want to show you is to integrate external systems into your Supply Chain Insights account. So for this example, we're going to use UPS APIs, but you can think of integrating your own supply chain systems, whether that's using UPS, FedEx, um, whatever process you, you use, and integrating them into um, Supply Chain Insights so that you can get advisories and, and um, that extra insights that comes from the news integration and the resolution rooms that come from this product. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so first things first, um, we've done up to step six into the Supply Chain Insights README. So the last thing we want to do is step seven. And first, we must get a UPS account. Um, so you can click on sign up or log in. Um, go ahead and sign up first, but I'm going to click log in because I've already signed up. Um, Awesome. So I've now signed into my account. Um, so you need to create your own account and sign in. That's the first step. After you do that, um, we're going to go ahead and request the API key. So go ahead and click on this link. And again, all these links are in the README and then click on request access key. Um, fill in the information and then click request access key. Awesome. Um, so you see that we have this access key now. So let's go ahead and update our project. Um, so I'll update this access key here. And again, you don't need to uh, type this in yourself. You can copy it straight from here. So I have this here. So you can go ahead and copy and paste that. Um, so now it's, uh, it's time to actually run the script. OK. So. Let's go ahead and make sure that, not, um, so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to um, take some of the dummy data that UPS provides us. So it provides us with this dummy shipment number um, from 1999, and it'll take, and it'll give us um, uh, an object back that has all the de delivery information about the shipment. So let's go ahead and ask Watson about this. So I'll ask Watson, um, show me this shipment, and it should not be in here. I did not find 1688 from Demo Carrier. Um, so we see Watson did not find anything, um, which is good. So next, what we're going to do is in our UPS script, um, it'll use this access key. And what it'll do is it'll take this UPS reference number. And in main, we'll get the UPS info. It will use that information. And it will um, grab that object and then update uh, Supply Chain Insights. Again, you have to put in your own um, username and password in the UPS info. So whatever you signed in um, to UPS with, you'll have to update that um, in the function. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and run it now. So essentially what we'll do, we'll get that object back and we'll parse it. So let me just run that. Um, so here's the object we get back. Um, so we can see the pickup date is in 1999. Um, and that's what we're going to parse. This is the date that's delivered. This is the address. So essentially what we're doing in the update supply chain insights is we take the tame, uh, date and the time, we parse it, um, and we create this new object. And in we create a new post request um, for the sales shipments within Supply Chain Insights. And in the body of the request is where we put all that UPS information. And of course, this is where you would put in your own Supply Chain information. Uh, but this is just an example. And um, now we can ask uh, Watson to show us the sales shipment. I found the following sales shipment related to 1Z12,000. 
Um, and this is where you can see all the 1999 dates that, that this UPS object gave us. And um, yeah, this is kind of just an easy way to update Supply Chain Insights with your own external uh, data. And of course, the more data you give it, the more valuable it's going to be. So the more data you give it, the the more you can really drill deeper into, you know, you can get more accurate advisories. Um, if something goes wrong, you can get into the resolution rooms. Um, so yeah. This is kind of just a quick way to get started and show you how to integrate some external systems. So um, if you like this content, please go ahead and subscribe. And um, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.